America's in a big catch-22 this week because if justice prevails and Derek Chauvin is found not guilty of George Floyd's fentanyl overdose, then there's gonna be riots like this country has never seen. And Mad Maxine Waters decided to travel to Minnesota to egg them on. What happens? What should protesters do? Well, we, we gotta stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, th they know that we mean business. And what a surprise, somebody did a drive-by shooting targeting National Guard troops who are stationed there, trying to prevent Black Lives Matter from burning the city down. And thankfully none of them were hurt, but sadly they weren't deployed to Kenosha last summer when Black Lives Matter were burning that city down. And so some of the locals had to get out to try to protect their neighborhoods, including good Samaritans like Kyle Rittenhouse, who was then attacked by the mob and had to defend himself and was then arrested. Thankfully, he was able to raise enough money to get bailed out of jail until his trial, despite GoFundMe banning his page, because only Black Lives Matter and other leftist activists who've been arrested are allowed to fundraise on that website. So he and his lawyers had to use Give, Send, Go to raise the money, which just got targeted and hacked by leftist Marxist hackers who doxed everybody who donated to his bail fund. And now activist journalists have picked up the torch and are doxing not only these people's names, but publishing where they work, showing photos of them taken from their Facebook page. And in the case of this local Utah reporter, he decided to show up at somebody's house stalking and harassing them a local paramedic and confront him about his donation of ten dollars to Kyle Rittenhouse's bail fund. And speaking of Kenosha there was a mass shooting there over the weekend at a local college bar where three people were killed and another three people injured. Or as they would say in Chicago a typical evening. Of course it was trending on Twitter and for almost 12 hours the suspect was at large until they were thankfully apprehended but Almost all of the news coverage about the event was missing a description of the suspect, which is strange because especially since he was at large, you would think that they would want to give a description of the dirtbag who did this so that some of the locals would know who to be on the lookout for. Or if somebody knew kind of an unhinged person who fit that description, who they knew was maybe going to the bar that night, that they could call the police and give them a tip so that the person could be caught. But it's much worse than that because the local CBS affiliate initially included this in their reporting, that the quote, suspect is described as a black male over six feet tall wearing a light colored hooded sweatshirt. But then after people started tweeting to them, because Twitter is the engine that's driving the crazy train of society off the cliff, they decided to dump that down the memory hole and delete it. One of the tweets that sparked the memory holing was this one that said, quote, Meredith, that was irresponsible reporting about the suspect in Kenosha. Quote, a black man over six feet tall with a hoodie on, that could be anybody. If he had been white, no description would have been given. Y'all already know black men are under attack in America. Do better. Like everything out of liberals' mouths, of course, that is 180 degrees from the truth. So the reporter, the reporter responded, wholeheartedly agree. And I'm taking the description out of my reports for the rest of the morning. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Imagine removing the description of a suspect when he's still at large. In other Black Lives Matter news, remember when the media was mocking President Trump for pointing out that a lot of the people at the riots would bring cans of soup and other canned goods to then throw at the police? And then they have cans of soup. Soup. And they throw the cans of soup. That's better than a brick because you can't throw a brick, it's too heavy. But a can of soup, you can really put some power into that, right? And if it hits you, that's worse than a brick because it's got force. It's the perfect size, it's like made perfect. And when they get caught, they say, no, this is just soup for my family. Right. And then the media says, this is just soup. These people are very, very innocent. They're innocent people. These are just protesters. While Trump stokes fear with bizarre stories about mysterious people on a plane emerging from the dark shadows, preying on the defenseless masses with bags of soup. Whoa, cans of soup, thugs yeah. on airplanes yep. wearing black uniforms, people you've never heard of who were in the dark shadows. So from our president, he's just got these ideas. It's literally in the Antifa playbooks and a tactic that's very well known to police officers because it's something that happens fairly frequently at Black Lives Matter riots. But thankfully this dirtbag 
let the cat out of the bag live on CNN. Uh, I'm just standing here today with uh, soup for my family, and uh, we're just, you know, watching all of this unfold. It's very unfortunate. You're not planning on using that, are you, throwing Absolutely. it at the police? Like I said, it's for my family. <laughs> Literally for your family. Yeah. All right. Tiger, I appreciate you talking you to us. Uh, oh, okay. No big deal then. And I'll bet you she actually literally believes that he was just walking back from the grocery store with one can of soup to feed his family. And he just happened to have his ski mask with him and stumbled across the protest on his way back home and decided to see what was going on. Also over the weekend, Black Lives Matter terrorists showed up at the home, or rather the former home, of one of the witnesses for the defense in the Derek Chauvin George Floyd trial and dumped animal blood all over his front porch and left the head of a pig there in order to intimidate and terrorize him. He sold the home, hasn't even lived there for several years, but when they were trying to dox him, that was an old address of his that showed up, and he's not even in the same state anymore. Also over the weekend, Black Lives Matter activists up in Portland set fire to an Apple store that had just reopened because of the ongoing disintegration of society up in the Pacific Northwest, and they'd even boarded up the building and turned the boards into a George Floyd Memorial, a St. Floyd Memorial, and so they just took them down, reopened the business, and now they have to close again. Remember shortly after Wendy's tweeted out their support and donated a bunch of money to Black Lives Matter? Then they burned down one of their <laughs> restaurants. As America continues to crumble and disintegrate into the New World Order, it can be hard not to get caught up into the latest trending topic and watch the latest businesses that are getting burned down by Black Lives Matter and the 24-hour news cycle and the latest mass shootings. But sometimes the best thing to do is to just unplug and just take care of your own self, your own family, your own neighborhood, your own community. I haven't been on Twitter in over two weeks now and I feel so much better. My head is so much more clear. I think that's a new record for me. So many of us, particularly you know, social media personalities, news commentators, feel that social media is a part of our daily life. And the way that Twitter is designed, if you use it, it just sucks you in. It's the biggest time waster. And people constantly feel like they need to give their two cents on the latest trending topics. And so I'm taking a break from Twitter and I highly recommend that you do as well. I will be probably still using Gab and Parler and some of the alternative sites, but Twitter is just such a dumpster fire that right now I just can't even look at it without getting a headache. Of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new here. And if you guys enjoy watching my videos, get yourself a liberalism find a care shirt from my online store at markdice.com or an I love global warming shirt or any of my awesome designs. Available on a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>